There's this funny story I read once, I don't think it's true, but it might be. Where a psychology class got together and decided they'd play a trick on the professor. And the trick was that he would walk back and forth, eh? And, and the trick was that they wouldn't pay any attention to him at all if he was on the left side of the room. You know, they'd talk a bit and look, look up. And if he was on the right side of the room, then they'd really focus in and pay attention. And the story goes that by the, you know, by several weeks of this little trick, they had him like lecturing right beside the door, you know, and he wouldn't move from that spot. And so the reason I'm telling you that is because it's pretty obvious that people can respond to the cues that a crowd is delivering. You know, and a good speaker does that, right? So a good speaker does a variety of things. And one is he never talks to the, to the crowd per se. You know, you pick out specific individuals and talk to them, and they're sort of reflective of the crowd, and then you can tell if everybody's understanding. And uh, the other thing that a good speaker does is pay attention to the damn responses of the crowd. Because, you know, if, if a lecture is really a dialogue, even though the, the audience is only emitting nonverbal, the nonverbal elements of the conversation, those nonverbal elements, those damn things are important. So, you want to stay in touch with the nonverbal communications. Now, so, by speaking in the appropriate way you can get all sorts of things churned up in in the in the unconscious minds of your listeners and by watching them as well you can extract out their unconscious desires so now i'm speaking to you all and you're all irritated because your life has been really awful for 15 years and I'm saying this, and I'm saying that, and I'm saying this, and I'm saying that. You know, and then I say something, maybe I say something uh, initially uh, dismissive of Jews. And you're all mad, and there's two or three people who go, yeah. And then I think, oh, well, you know, that's kind of an interesting response. And then, you know, I lay out a couple more ideas and some of them don't get any response and others, you know, people perk right up and, and I'm not stupid and I'm trying to get the bloody attention of the crowd and so if I do that 50 times the crowd's going to tell me an awful lot about what they want especially if I'm willing to follow them and I can do that easily because especially if I can start to work the crowd a little bit because I can capitalize on their emotional on their emotional capitalize on their emotions and the display of that emotion and I can learn to play that and then that turns into a positive feedback loop and so Hitler's informing the audience and the audience is informing Hitler and that's why Jung believed that Hitler embodied the shadow of the German people so that's another reason why you should be careful what you say and why you say it you know, and why you're looking for attention and all of those things and actually what's motivating you and actually what's motivating the people who are listening to you because God only knows where it might go if you're not careful well actually we do know where it goes if you're not careful and it's not pretty that's for sure and to think that we've learned anything from that it's like no that that's not right we haven't learned a damn thing from it so because we don't want to understand it 